All right, it's time to get back to work on the smart car, at least for a little bit. And as you can see, I've trimmed as much as I can possibly trim off of this um, on both sides all the way around. So let's see if that makes a difference and uh, go for a little ride. You ready? Yeah. All right. Let's see if she cranks. Yes, it does. Yeah, it does. Alright, so obviously that made a pretty big difference, but uh, just didn't solve the whole problem. I think once you get weight in the car, the springs are just so soft that they just collapse down and take up most of this gap. There's two solutions. I can either put the sway bar back on to keep the tires from going as far up and down and having as much travel. don't really want to do that. First thing I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to go ahead and lift it on the struts there about another three quarters of an inch, half inch. I really can't cut into these frame horns. I guess I could, but I don't want to. It seems like a whole lot more trouble than it's worth. And of course the core support pretty much has to be there. Well, I used my trusty block of wood and a big old mallet and got it down to where it's now officially three inches pushed down from its original position as far as the struts. So I technically have a three inch lift on the front. Of course, there's only two inch block spacer, so that means my camber is going to be off. But that's okay, this won't see the road. In fact, the tires will probably outlast the car. But that's how I'm going to be able to go on a lift without getting either spacers for the top of the struts or just changing the struts all together. So we'll take it for another drive here in a minute and see if that did it. I'm optimistic. You can tell it's another inch up. You ready? Yeah. All right, last try. Hopefully it works. So far so good. So that wasn't much scrubbing, was it? No. No. Only a little bit? A little bit. Okay. okay. I think we can live with it. What do you think? Yeah. All right. All right, so success. We lifted another inch. That took away most of the scrubbing. Still a little bit of scrubbing, but that's okay. I did put this door back on. One thing that a golf cart doesn't have is doors. One thing that this car will have is doors in case, you know, inclement weather or it's winter time or whatever. However, <clears throat> these doors, despite being just plastic, uh, are extremely heavy. Probably the heaviest single part on the car. Uh, so I do need weight reduction. And the only way I'm going to reduce the weight on these doors is to take the windows out of them. Which I get it. Now I suddenly have them open air again. But it still protects mostly. I just want to be able to take them on and off, just in case. And 
the speakers and the electric locks and everything still work the way I'm making this. So now this door, which is back on now, is extremely light. I can pick it up in one hand. It's pretty easy uh, to put on and off. <clears throat> but there are some things you have to do. So I'm gonna show you how I, I just took apart, how you take apart one of these doors. And then this is kind of what I'm doing. I'm gonna get a longer uh, dowel here with a flat top so that it doesn't go all the way through because I, I shaved these bushings some so that now drops really easily. And you can reach that dowel, especially if it's longer, just with this cut out. I'm gonna clean this up a little bit, make that a little bit better. Um, but given the jagged edges, I still have to clean up down here and everywhere else is fine. Could cut out a provision like that for the bottom hinge, but it would take away this marker light. I kind of like that marker light, so I'm not going to. And I'm not going to put the um, light bar on until I make that roof removable. All right, now I just need to work on this other door and uh, maybe mount the winch controller. So guys, this is what an extremely heavy <coughs> door looks like. It's got a window motor, a regulator, a window. It's got this piece. Uh, it's got mirrors. Uh, it's heavy. Despite the fact that this is a very flimsy door. So we're going to start taking apart this door by taking this piece off. It's just got a little T20. thing off once you get the, the back and the, and the bottom corner off there's slides right here that clip in and you have to slide these slide the whole panel this way and then it just kind of falls off so here's what the inside of the door looks like a lot of people gut them take both panels off and just use the frame as a kind of like a exo door we're not doing that uh, I'm just going to go ahead and take those bolts loose and these bolt those two basically I'll take the big ones loose that gets the, the glass out of the way and then those and I think there's a rivet or two I have to drill and then that whole regulator motor comes out there's a bolt down there and then that bottom uh, support for the rear view mirror comes out a couple bolts up here and when I take those out that will take out the support for the uh, suicide window and then this door will officially be good. Right, gentlemen now we have a fully gutted door except for the speaker we're going to cut the little stopper off we're going to hold, hog out these with a file these bushings and then we're going to put the outer skin back on the best way to do that is to get these holes lined up there's two little overhangs that clip in one on each side get all that done and when you do you'll slide the back into this and slide everything forward um, and then you'll have to start working this lip all the way up um, into position probably with a screwdriver uh, and then you can slide your door handle back on the door panels the outer door panels literally just held on with these slide sliding clips and the little lip that goes around the edge all right so i'm gonna do that off camera so here's what can happen somehow this one popped back out you can see down in there now I've got to take the whole thing off, slide it forward, put it back in place, and slide it back. Or I got this one and that one holding it and all the screws and everything else holding there. There's the two screws over there holding the door handle on, holding it, all the whole edges on, it's holding it. Uh, and I can just leave that. 
the golf cart. I'm leaving it. All right, that looks pretty good. It works. I just went and got some 5 16 bolts and a long one for the bottom so I can reach down in there. I beveled the bottom of it so that it will go right in there. <clears throat> so now I can take these on and off in five minutes. Super light. Everything works. Well, of course, the window doesn't work because it doesn't have a window. But the speakers work again. And uh, yeah, now it's got doors if I need them. And I can quickly take them off if I don't. I've wired the winch. Took the battery cable in through actually the heater box and then straight down to the battery. Super easy routing uh, and it works good. Guys, that's where we're going to leave off on the smart car. David, did you like the smart car? Yeah. All right. And uh, so the next time we make a video, what we're going to do is put the light bar on and make the top convertible. Yes. We're going to make that top convertible, buddy. But guys, so far, just driving around the property, flat property. It's pretty cool. Still got a little scrubbing up front. Uh, there'll be another smart car video coming out in a few weeks, but not anytime, not anytime soon, probably about four or five weeks from now. Unless y'all want to see it. If you see it, give it a thumbs up and uh, we'll get started. Next video is probably going to be on uh, Ruffles Blue Truck and then maybe a Jeep video. But guys, thanks for watching. I uh, hope y'all enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing and have a great day.